Hey there, this is John from My Solar Home. Welcome to this latest video. Seven mistakes to avoid when you're going for solar plus a battery or solar power storage project. I'll start with the seven mistakes and I'll dive into each one in detail. Mistake number one is making sure you're a good candidate for solar and battery. If you don't take care of that right at the beginning, things might not work out for you. Maybe something like a solar generator or a regular generator might be a better choice for you. Mistake number two is not having a correct budget. You've got to learn how much this project will cost. Spoiler alert, it's a lot. I will also price out some other alternatives. Mistake number three is having unrealistic expectations. You know, what kind of backup can you expect from solar and batteries? Don't expect to be able to run everything in your home. I'm going to break it down for you. Mistake number four is not planning for the room and space that all this equipment, there's a lot of equipment this, for the battery storage project. Mistake number five is not planning what loads to back up. You know, your battery can't take care of everything. You've got to plan your load. Mistake number six is choosing the wrong installation project. Solar, especially with batteries is complicated, you'll need to have a knowledgeable product. Make sure you choose somebody who knows their business. And finally, mistake number seven is making the wrong choice of battery or solar panels for your department. Let's get things started off with mistake number one. Making sure a solar plus battery setup is your perfect match. Now, if you're dreaming of a setup that keeps your entire house running during an outage, you know, your AC, your washing machine, your electric range, the lights, the whole enchilada, hold up a second. Solar plus battery might not be the right choice for you. Why, you ask? Well, the truth is, to do that kind of backup, you will need a bunch of batteries. And those buddies, they don't come to shape. That particular case, if you're looking for full home backup, a natural gas backup generator might be your best choice. Those clock about 12,000 fully installed. Sure, they're a bit noisy and they're tad polluting, but hey, no more gas station sprints. Now, if you're more of an essentials kind of person, you know, keeping the kitchen, the fridge, the microwave, the sump pump, your TV, internet, lights, office equipment alive and kicking, then a battery is your sweet spot. It's like having a strong side and sidekick for your daily power needs. But there's a little bit of a secret sauce to the solar plus battery, battery combo. You have to treat your battery like the MVP it is. Run the AC for a couple of hours max. Fire up those 240 volt appliances in emergencies, like you know your electric kitchen range or your instant water heater. But going beyond that, brace yourself, because then it's going to turn out to be really expensive with extra batteries. And if you're up to it, that's great. But for most folks, you're thinking of doing everything, not a good idea. Now, going completely off-grid, very doable with solar and batteries. But again, picture yourself powering up your essentials for your off-grid adventure. Now, fair warning, if you are planning to have a power setup that rivals Tony Stark's personal lab, that's a one-way ticket to a wallet train. Remember, your solar plus battery dream team needs to align with your power needs and your aspirations. Let's dive into mistake number two. Everybody's favorite topic, budget. I am all for solar and for batteries. They're the rock stars of green power and batteries. You know, you gotta be real. Upfront, they can be a bit of a financial burden. But the long-term games are like winning the lottery for the next few decades. Imagine this, an average size solar system with about 20 panels, that's kind of about an 8KW system, put you back about 24 to 26 grand. It's expensive, right? But there's more. If you slap on a basic 10 kWh battery from big names like Tesla, NPhase, Franklin, or SolarEdge, then you're looking at another 12 to 14 grand. So that basic solar panels plus battery essentials package totals a cool 40,000 bucks. Now, here's the plot twist. You could snag this setup without splurging a single penny up front. The option is to go for a fixed cost or to purchase this with a solar financing loan. Now, what advice? If you are going for the lease, stick to the fixed price 
fixed cost lease, not the sneaky escalating ones. And speaking of costs, solo financing typically hangs around the 10% interest mark. But if you are able to get your own lower cost financing through maybe a home equity loan or your own loan, that's the best way to go if you're planning to finance. Now, quick heads up for those of you who are tempted by solar loans from the solar companies. They flaunt three or four percent low interest loans. Unfortunately, they hide huge dealer fees. But those solar financing loans at three or four percent, they hide a huge amount of dealer fees and they could easily up your price from 40,000 to 55,000. It's sneaky, but that's how the industry works. Now, if you're itching for an honest code that will blow the Costco Sunruns and Sonovas out of the water, whether it's a fixed lease or a finance deal, shoot me an email. I'll give you best prices that's going to make you do a happy dance. Now, those of you who are eyeing a power backup solution that won't break the bank, you might even think about an option called Solar Generator. I have a video with a link below. These bad boys cost a third of the traditional Solar Plus battery setup. They pack a decent punch. For details, check out the video, which is there in my link below. You could be looking at doing power backup with a solar generator with a budget of 5,000 or less. So it's not, it's nothing to sneeze at. Let's get to mistake number three, which is avoiding those wild expectations when you come to your batteries and what they can do for you. Whether it's a Tesla Powerwall, an Enphase 5P, or a Franklin, or a Solar Edge, all of them, they start out with their basic size of about 10 to 13 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. And that's the one which is going to set you back around 12 to 14 grand in store. The reality is that with that kind of a battery, the base battery, you are only able to do just your essentials in your home. If you're dreaming of a cozy five to six hours of air conditioning, please, regular spins on your electric range, washing machine, dishwasher and all that jazz, you don't need to double or triple up on batteries. And that's going to dodge you into the low 20s or even into the low 30s in terms of cost. And if you're thinking of not having to play power police at all and doing whatever you want during an outage, we're talking about four batteries or more and that's going to run you 40 grand or higher just for the batteries. I would say keep it real and stick with a basic 10 to 13 kWh battery. That's your ticket to running your home during an outage, keeping the office wheels turning, the kids happy, playing their Xboxes, the kitchen's humming with activity, fridge, freezer, everything is working. All that magic can happen with one battery. The only thing is you gotta be careful if you're thinking of running an AC or any other 240 volt appliance in your home. Use your battery energy prudently You'll be able to use it to run everything in your home if you like, but don't go overboard. Now let's zoom into mistake number four. This is about planning the perfect space for your battery storage project. So let's look at the setup. You have solar panels on your roof. You need to have enough to generate energy for your home and your usage. They're probably either on your roof or in your backyard. Now the good news with solar panels is the solar panels do not mess with your home electric. All the wizardry happens outside. Your indoor space is usually clutter-free. Only the solar system which comes from Tesla and SolarEdge, there is a bit of action on the back of your home where they put a couple of inverter boxes. These are like a couple of feet wide and two or three feet high. They could be there in your garage or in your basement, usually close to the main. Now, I'm a fan of M-phase microinverters and those they actually install right behind each solar panel. So each one gets its own microinverter. And with this architecture, you don't have any bulky inverters hugging your garage or basement space. So it's pretty clean, sleek, auto set. So the solar panels is nice and neat, but batteries are a whole different ball. Battery systems have a lot of elements. There is a controller. This is again, decently sized box. The battery itself, whether it's a Tesla, Franklin, Solar Edge, or an Enphase, again, would be either one or two units. And they are pretty big. When I say pretty big, three feet by four feet. And you gotta make sure that these are kept either 
on your wall and usually near your electric panels. All these setups, if you look at them, any of these batteries, you've got to plan for eight or nine feet of clear area in your garage or your basement with nothing there. Your car should not be pushing close to the battery itself. Mistake number five is not planning the loads that you want to pack. Now, depending on the size of the battery you install, you have to choose which circuits in your home will be better. In your, in your main electric panel, you see a lot of different breakers. They are for your home, for your living room, for your kitchen, for your air conditioner, maybe your washer dryer, your hot water heater, your bedrooms, etc. Now, when you have a base 13 kWh battery or even a 20 kWh battery, two of them, they're not going to be able to back up all those loads. So you will have to choose which of those circuits you're going to pack up. You could throw in the AC, you could throw in another heavy duty load like your washing machine, but make sure you discuss it with your solar salesperson. So you understand that you have these additional loads, which you plan to use prudently as required. Now, another interesting option in the market is to upgrade your electric panel to a smart panel, something like a span smart panel. Now that smart panel will tag an extra three to four grand to your project costs. But this gives you the flexibility to choose what to power and what loads to back up. No choosing particular circuits. All you have to do is swipe a smart app and decide run the AC, run this, run that, it's flexibility on steroids. So it's money well spent, in my opinion. Mistake number six is choosing a wrong installation problem. Solar plus PV and batteries is complicated. You need to have a knowledgeable partner. Make sure you have a partner who's installed more than three or four batteries, especially of the type you're planning to purchase. You don't want your installer turning on your dime. Unfortunately, this happens I've seen it happen. And it's particularly risky if you're planning to buy a non-standard battery. The main four batteries that we've talked about so far, those, the solar companies have started gaining experience in them. But if you're talking about other batteries, you could be in a little bit of a problem area. Finally, mistake number seven is making the wrong choice of battery or solar panel. Now, my advice in terms of battery is to stick to the four big ones. 10, Tesla, Enphase, Franklin, or SolarEdge. Your choice of battery, of course, is very linked to the inverter that you plan to use with your solar panels. If you're like me and you like Enphase, you probably would choose the Enphase batteries as they are the most superbly integrated with the Enphase microinverter system. If on the other hand, you're thinking of going with Tesla solar panels, Tesla would be your best choice. Franklin is a good choice that can go either with Enphase or with Tesla, pretty flexible. But when you're doing Enphase, I normally suggest going with the Enphase batteries. Enphase batteries cannot be installed with either Tesla or with others like a SolarEdge system. If you're buying SolarEdge with optimizers, you could do solar rich batteries, you could do Tesla, or you could do Franklin, but you won't be able to do end phase with those batteries. My advice when you're thinking of other battery vendors, you know, there are many of them who are trying to do really well right now, but we don't know the jury is still out. Many of them are going to die in the next five to 10 years, and you will have nobody to service your batteries. Genrag is having huge problems with the batteries which they've installed, even with the solar panels that they've done. Fortress is a good brand trying to make a name for themselves, but hang on, stick tight with the four big names for now. In terms of solar panels, I have other videos on my channel about the best solar panels, but in 2024, to make it simple, choose a solar panel with efficiencies of 22% or more. You will have a very, very small list, like an REC or a SunPower or a SilkFab. Any one of those panels are great, I would stick to either M-phase microinverters or solar age optimizers with them. The Tesla, I would keep it as a distant third. So that's Solar Warriors is the wrap. I hope you've enjoyed this journey of getting 
new solar panels and batteries for your home. So hit that like and subscribe button. Keep harnessing the power of the sun and absolutely have a radiant day.